Ever thought your apartment was a bit too small or your town was a bit too quiet? Well, buckle up, because we're about to put things into perspective. Imagine waking up to a polar bear as your neighbor or needing to wear a spacesuit just to step outside. Yes, we're talking about the world's most extreme living conditions, places so wild they make your rush hour commute look like a walk in the park. So if you're ready for an adventure, let's dive right into our countdown of the 10 most uninhabitable places where people actually live. Starting off our list is a place that makes your winter look like a tropical vacation. Welcome to Omyakon, Russia. Known as the coldest inhabited place on earth, it's not for the faint-hearted. Picture this, temperatures that can drop to a bone-chilling minus 60 degrees Celsius. Yes, you heard that right, minus 60. But don't think that life comes to a standstill here. On the contrary, locals have adapted to the frosty conditions in truly remarkable ways. The radiator of their cars, for instance, never goes off. Schools only close when temperatures hit a staggering minus 52. Talk about a snow day, right? And guess what? Despite the chilly temperatures, life goes on in Oymyakon. People work, kids play, and families thrive. It's about resilience, adaptation, and the incredible human spirit. And let's not forget the ability to make a mean cup of hot chocolate. So next time you're complaining about the snow, remember the good folks in Omyakon. Our next destination will quite literally take your breath away. Perched a staggering 17,000 feet above sea level, we find La Rinconada, Peru, the highest human habitation in the world. It's a place where the air is thin and the living is challenging. Imagine, if you will, a city where every step is an effort, where the simple act of breathing becomes a task that demands your attention. This is the everyday reality for the residents of La Rinconada. Living at such dizzying heights, they have adapted to the lack of oxygen and the harsh, freezing temperatures that are a daily part of life in this remote Andean town. But despite the difficulties, the people of La Rinconada are a testament to human resilience, showing us that life can flourish in even the most inhospitable of environments, even if it means living closer to the stars than to the sea level. So if you're not a fan of stairs, La Rinconada might not be the place for you. From the driest deserts to the wettest rainforests, we've got more extreme habitats coming your way. Let's start with the Atacama Desert in Chile, the driest place on Earth. Here, rain is as mythical as unicorns. With some areas receiving less than a millimeter of rain annually, it's a wonder anything survives here. Yet, some resilient creatures and plants have adapted to this parched landscape, reminding us that life always finds a way. Now, let's swap the dry for the wet and dive into the rain-soaked depths of the Daintree Rainforest in Australia. This lush tropical paradise receives more than a hundred inches of rain each year. It's home to a staggering variety of plants and wildlife, some of which are as old as the dinosaurs. Talk about a living time capsule. From the wet, let's move to the cold. Ever wondered how it would be to live in a freezer? The folks at Yellowknife Canada don't have to wonder. They live it. With temperatures plunging to minus 40 degrees during winter, it's a place where hot coffee can freeze before it hits the ground. But don't worry, the locals have a warm heart and are always ready with a hot cup of cocoa. Next, let's turn up the heat and head to Dalol, Ethiopia, one of the hottest inhabited places on Earth. Here, the average annual temperature is a scorching 94 degrees Fahrenheit. But it's not just the heat that's extreme, Dalol is also home to some of this most colorful and alien-looking geothermal springs on the planet. It's a place where reality seems to have taken a vacation, and Salvador Dali's paintings have come to life. From the hot, let's move to the high. The very, very high. Welcome to the Himalayan village of Komik in India. Sitting at a dizzying height of over 15,000 feet, it's one of the highest inhabited villages in the world. The air is thin, the landscape is stark, and the views are simply breathtaking. The locals, with their hearty constitution and warm smiles, are a testament to the human spirit's adaptability. Now let's go low, really low. We're talking about the Caspian Depression in Kazakhstan, one of the lowest points on Earth that, that's not underwater. Here you're more than 90 feet below sea level. It's a surreal landscape of salt flats and semi-desert a place that seems more suited to a science fiction movie than real life. And finally, let's head to the middle of the ocean. Midway Atoll, a tiny speck of land in the vast Pacific Ocean, is one of the remotest inhabited places on Earth. It's a paradise for birds, hosting the world's largest colony of albatrosses. 
For the few humans who live here, it's a life of isolation and tranquility, surrounded by the endless blue of the sea and sky. These are just a few of the world's most extreme habitats, places where the conditions are tough, but the human spirit is tougher. Each one is a testament to our incredible capacity to adapt and thrive, no matter how harsh the environment. But hold on to your hats, because we've saved the most extreme for last. Now for the grand finale, we're heading to the most remote inhabited island in the world. Picture, if you will, a volcanic island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, over 2,000 miles from the nearest continent. This is Tristan da Cunha, home to a small, hearty community living on the edge of the world. The island's isolation is its defining feature. There are no airports or seaports here. The only way to get to Tristan da Cunha is by a six-day boat journey from South Africa. Talk about an epic commute. Life on this remote island is not for the faint of heart. With a population of about 250 people, everyone knows everyone. It's like living in a real-life soap opera, but with more sheep and fish. The islanders are largely self-sufficient, relying on farming and fishing for their sustenance. They grow potatoes, maintain cattle herds, and harvest the bounty of the sea. But don't expect a fast food joint or a supermarket around the corner. Everything here is about the survival of the fittest, and the fittest are those who adapt. And then there's the weather. Located in the path of the roaring 40s wind belt, the island is frequently battered by strong winds and heavy rains, but the islanders take it all in their stride. After all, what's a little wind and rain when you live on the most remote inhabited island in the world? Despite these challenges, or perhaps because of them, the residents of Tristan da Cunha have formed a tight-knit community. They've learned to rely on each other in ways that we can hardly imagine, and they wouldn't have it any other way. Living on Tristan da Cunha is certainly not easy, but it's an extraordinary testament to human resilience and adaptability. So the next time you're miffed because your Wi-Fi is slow or you're complaining about not having a Starbucks on your corner, just remember the residents of Tristan da Cunha. Now that we've toured the world's most extreme habitats, I bet your apartment doesn't seem so bad, huh? We kicked things off in Oymyakon, Russia, where residents brave the coldest temperatures on Earth, turning frostbite into a mere inconvenience. Next, we took a breathless journey to La Rinconada, Peru, a town that literally touches the sky. Its citizens defy altitude sickness every day, living life on the highest of highs. We then toured a medley of other extreme habitats, each one a testament to human resilience. From the scorching heat of the Death Valley, to the waterlogged stilt houses of Tonle Sap, Cambodia, we saw that home is truly where the heart is, no matter how inhospitable the surroundings may be. Our final stop was the remote island of Tristan da Cunha, a place so isolated that mail only arrives a few times a year. Yet its inhabitants wouldn't trade their tranquil solitude for anything. These places may seem extreme, and they are, but they're also home to people who have adapted and thrived in conditions most of us could hardly imagine. Their stories remind us of the remarkable ability of humans to endure and adapt, to make a home in the unlikeliest of places. So next time you're feeling a little cramped, or the weather's not quite to your liking, remember, it could always be more extreme.